All right, good morning and welcome to the stock market update. It is Friday the 13th and there's a lot to talk about because the Dow yesterday fell for a sixth day in a row. The S&P 500 is down 18%. Once it hits 10%, the bear market is coming. Is that happening today? Yesterday, Fed Chair Powell says he cannot guarantee a soft landing. So we'll talk about this. Apple yesterday down now 22% from its high. So it's in a bear market. Meme stocks are back, so there's a short squeeze for Lucid, GameStop, AMC will take a look at this. And then, of course, again, news from Twitter and Elon Musk. Plus, today, super special day, we'll do some live trading with you, so it will be an extended show. But before we dive in and show you what's moving the markets, I'm Marcus Heidkotter. Good morning. And this super smart guy over there is my head coach, Mark Hodge. And Together, we have more than 47 years of trading experience. And every morning, we sift through a mountain of news websites, newsletters, and reports. And then we take the most important news and go live right here to share with you what you need to know as you head into your trading day. If this is your first time here, I know it can be overwhelming, but don't worry. We have a special video just for you that I'll link to in the description and also somewhere here in the cards. And that's a great place to get started. So Mark, today, we'll do some live trading. That'll be exciting. Yeah, that'll be fun, Marcus. Looking forward to it. All right, but, but let's run through our usual morning routine here right now and let's see what's happening in the markets here. So I brought up the S&P 500 and yesterday for the S&P 500, another down day. Yeah, it, it really almost felt like the sky was falling, Marcus. Oh no, look out below. We gapped down, we, we dipped lower, uh, but by the end of the day, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, so I'm switching to a five minute chart and this is where, yeah, our markets were just nervous yesterday and there was this, okay, buyers, is it time to step in or not yet? And uh, I think this is what we have seen here. I mean, the down now is six, sixth straight day in a row down. Yeah, and I mean, you, you see the, the decline there and uh, making lows for uh, 2022 and I mean, gosh, if you were to, well, I mean, we're going back to tw uh, March of 2021. Uh, yeah. So, hey, you know, I, I do want to make a, a correction, not to correct you to be a jerk, but just for clarification. I think at the opening, you said a bear market for the S&P would be 10%. Oh, okay. No, it should be 20%. And we're down 18% right now from this high that we made here uh, earlier in January. And yep. so yeah, it would be uh, when, when we are going down to 20%. Now, the NASDAQ is solid in bear market territory. I mean, I mean because yes. the NASDAQ uh, now from this high 30%. is down, uh, what, 30%. So NASDAQ yep. definitely getting hit hard. And I think that 20%, that bear market, that's going to be... It, that's going to be watched, right? Uh, in the S and P, the the four thousand level, we broke through that. Can it pop back above four thousand today? Yeah, well, you know, we'll see. But uh, I, that that twenty percent drop, you're going to hear about that over and over for the next couple of uh, days, maybe weeks. Do you think we're going to get down there, Marcus, or do you think that this is the moment for the S and P? Well, we'll see. I mean, right now, I don't see a bottom. And yesterday was also yeah. interesting because it was kind of Powell who was to blame again that the markets were falling. So Powell yesterday uh, in, in an interview said some very interesting things. Did, did you see that? I, I did. And I think Powell did the right thing here. <laughs> uh, basically, he said that, um, you know, getting inflation under control can cause some economic pain, but it remains his top priority because basically the alternative is a lot more painful, right? Uh, he said that he couldn't promise a so-called soft landing for the economy as the Fed raises rates to tamp down price increases running near their fastest pace in more than 40 years. Yeah, and, and this is where he said, you know what, we were trying the best we can, but there are some external factors that we cannot influence. And these external factors uh, that he pointed out is the COVID situation in China, which leads to supply chain issues. Do you hear the latest one about baby food formula? I mean, I, there's, I really there's no formula that, to be yeah. found anywhere. That yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah, I, I saw that in the article. Right. And, and the other thing is, of course, uh, the war in Ukraine that is still going on and there's no improvement uh, inside. So, I mean, it seems that this might be uh, here to stay. I mean, almost both situations. And he says because of this, it could actually be 
that we are sliding into a recession and markets did not like these comments at all. Yeah, and you know, this came the the same day the Senate uh, confirmed him for a second term. Uh, and, and so you know, that came seven months after President Joe Biden uh, submitted the nomination. So uh, he's confirmed for a, a second term there. But, you know, I, I think it was a little, he was keeping it real. <laughs> it was a little bit of a reality check. Um, and I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I, I kind of think it was a good thing that he's not sugarcoating it like he has been in the past and just laying out some expectations. But you're right. The, the traders didn't like to hear that. Yeah, and I mean, this is where we know that Powell likes to reverse course uh, every now and then. Uh, remember last year when he said, oh, infl inflation is transitory. And then at some point he says, it's time to retire this. And then, oh, my gosh, we're really concerned about inflation. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And, and, and he said, yeah, well, we can uh, we can do a soft landing. This is over the past few weeks. He has signaled that uh, they got it under control. And now he's basically saying, no, I, I don't think I mean, it is still possible, he said. But I think that uh, over the next few days or weeks, he might reverse course and say, yeah, it's not going to happen and we will go into a recession. So th this is what keeps the market nervous. And yesterday there was just a, a super broad sell off. Super interesting that also yesterday uh, the 10 year yield was falling together with the market. And then we had, of course, the cryptocurrencies yesterday that have been falling. Uh, we, we had crude oil uh, yesterday. Oh, no, yesterday it was moving a little bit higher, but I believe it was gold uh that was falling i mean i mean we were just down across all asset Everything. classes here absolutely yeah that 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 visualization of uh down markets it was uh red 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 and red <laughs> right so it seemed that there was risk off but then on the other hand we saw uh quite a few stocks yesterday popping significantly higher i mean lucid Yesterday, popping higher 13% in pre-market trading, up another 4% here. I mean, that's a pretty pretty big move. And then we have our, uh, our favorites, GameStop. Look at that move yesterday. I'm switching to a five-minute chart. I mean, this year was up, up, and away. Uh, let's just measure this move really quickly. So uh, half an hour after the open, that is 40% move higher. Yeah, these are interesting moves because we we've seen the you know, the meme stocks that the craze there, the, the push into these crazy risky uh, assets and, and stocks and you know, I mean, Bitcoin as well. Money starting to flow there. I mean, it, it, do you think that's funds uh, trying to take advantage of an opportunity here and in, in algorithms? Or do you think that's retail traders thinking, hey, this is an opportunity? I mean, this is a surprise move because in, in these markets uh, where there's blood in the streets, it, it's hard to imagine that retail traders are stepping in and buying. I mean, retail traders are usually when the market is falling, this is when they're not buying, this is when they're selling. And often retail traders sell at the worst time in the market. Agreed. So Agreed. That's, that's really interesting because same happened here in, uh, in AMC. Uh, so a little bit surprised by this. Uh, let's take a look at the volume to get an idea of all the volume. Okay, it was on fairly high volume here. So I don't know. I don't think that this is enough for a short squeeze. Because if you look here at the daily chart, I mean, AMC has been trading as high as 34 uh, few, just a few months ago in end of March. So I don't know what this has cost. It was just interesting. Yeah, absolutely. But you're, uh, you're, you're right. Typically, retail traders are late to the party, you know, after the move has taken place, they want to be a buyer at the top. And then after there's a, a pullback and sell off, they, they finally just can't handle the pain and then the, it reverses. So I, I agree that that one caught me off guard. Yeah. All right. But let's take a look at Apple. Apple also super interesting yesterday, huge slide for Apple. I mean, down another 2.7%. And uh, this was after uh, pretty much they are no longer the world's most valuable company. And this is where it seems that some people said, well, then let's get out of Apple. It was a bit surprising that it was down because uh, we, we had some other tech stocks, like, for example, Facebook being up yesterday or oh, yeah, at some point we need to call it Meta. I mean, I'm still calling it <laughs> Facebook. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. What was Amazon doing yesterday? also up so a little bit surprising that uh, this is where apple actually lost and this is where again it could be retail traders who say oh apple is no longer the most valuable company so let's get out of there let's get into something else yeah i mean the nasdaq actually ended up finishing positive yesterday so apple not really participating in that was a little bit of a disconnect 
Yeah. All right. Got to talk about Twitter. I mean, Twitter, the Twitter saga continues. This morning, pre-market trading down 11%. And uh, we had this jump up after Elon Musk said, okay, I'm buying Twitter. And this was over the past few uh, days. And he said, I'm buying Twitter at, uh, what was it? $56 and 20 cents, I believe, or 54. Or the 54.25, either way up there. Somewhere, yeah. somewhere around there, right? Uh, but now huge drop because Elon Musk, Tweet it again. He's active. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, honestly, this is all for show. I, I yeah. think uh, at this point, uh, he he brings up a valid point, and the concern is over fake Twitter accounts. And I think that the company, uh, you know, in documents, they had said that it represents five percent or, or less, five percent or less uh, of their accounts. And he's kind of questioning whether or not those fake and spam accounts actually could account for more. But, but as you said, it's probably just for show, because if you think about it, they, they reported 229 uh, million active users. So even, even if you subtract the 5%, uh, that's still 217 million active users. So yeah, uh, that's interesting. But yeah, this saga continues. So right now, Twitter down 10% uh, in pre-market trading. Um, <laughs> a firm, super interesting. So a firm uh, that also has been sliding down reported earnings and they reported some interesting things here, better than expected earnings, uh, smaller than expected loss and uh, some other big news. Uh, yeah, they revenue beat, uh, like you said, a, a smaller loss than expected. They were expecting a 51 cent loss per share and, and came in at just 19. Um, they raised their full year outlook. So that uh, is definitely always a plus forward looking what's going to happen, announcing an extension of its uh, partnership with uh, Shopify. Yeah. So traders liking that. All right. And then Hood, we've been talking about Hood, Robin Hood. And I mean, Robin Hood just sliding down. I think you mentioned oh, it the gosh. other day, uh, these IPOs uh, together with Rivian and Coinbase. And uh, so, I mean, sliding from at some point, $85 to right now, $8 and 56 cents. Uh, but some good news for them this morning. So they are up 23% in pre-market trading. Yeah, and uh, this seems to be a kind of with the broad market, but then you also have uh, this guy, Sam Bankman Freed, who uh, founded the cryptocurrency exchange FTX. Uh, there was a uh, uh, a regulatory filing that showed that he had taken a 7.6% uh, stake in uh, Robinhood, uh, which makes him the third largest shareholder in the, the company. But uh, he also, it, it's not like he wants to, to be uh, silent, like he's not trying to be a, a vocal yeah. owner. <laughs> All right, we'll see. So let's take a look at uh, what's happening here in pre-market trading. I'm bringing up the Emini Nasdaq futures and overnight trading. And uh, Overnight trading, I, I mean, we, we mentioned this yesterday, often in overnight trading, we see, ah, okay, it's pushing a little bit higher. And uh, before you go to sleep and you check the futures markets one more time on your phone, and it's looking good. And then there's this slide overnight, but not today. Today, it seems that uh, last night when I went to sleep and checked, uh, we were up and uh, this morning, even moving higher. Positive start for sure, about 1% uh, plus uh, across the board and uh, NASDAQ leading the way 1.7% higher. So pretty pretty nice uh, way to, to start the trading day. Uh, I didn't know a lot of the positions that we're in are getting a nice pre-market bounce and uh, participating in that. So uh, looks like a, a nice start. Yeah, so that's interesting. And uh, that, that's what we just said. I mean, Money has been flowing out of the market, sitting on the sidelines. At some point, money will flow back into the markets because you can't keep it under the mattress, especially not with inflation running at a 40 year high at 8.5%. So you got to deploy the money in the market. And is today the day? And this is where we go back to what you said. Okay, can today uh, the SP move above the psychologically important 4,000 mark. And uh, I mean, right now we are trading at 3,971 and a 30 point move for the S&P is nothing. That's only a 1% move days. here today. <laughs> yeah, not these days. 30, 30, 30 point move is a uh, striking distance for sure. <laughs> All right. But then do traders want to go long uh, into the weekend? That's the I, other I thing, right? With everything that is going on. Um, anyhow. 
So we'll go right into live trading here right now. But I know that some of you are listening to the show on their podcast platform. So if you're listening to this on a podcast platform, we will cut out here right now so that you have the usual 15 minute show. Uh, if you want to see us trading live, head over to YouTube. This is where you see the full show. And uh, we just say goodbye to our podcast listeners for now. And then uh, we'll continue with uh, the live trading show here. Happy trading. All right. Good. Uh, so let's actually talk about this and uh, let's uh, let's maybe just uh, quickly uh, talk a little bit about our our morning routine. And then, as you said, we, we like to uh, look through our positions here. So uh, a little bit about our our trading routine. It, it really starts. And uh, let me just make this in heading two. so it starts at uh, 815. AM and this would be central time because I'm here in Austin, Texas for you. It is 615. It is super early, right? And this is where we usually, okay, scan for power X opportunities. So we'll talk about this here in a moment, just so that you know what to expect here over the next few minutes. Uh, usually then at around 825 AM, uh, we look at our existing wheel positions and I'll explain why we do this uh, before the markets open and then uh, at 830 CT this is when the markets open and uh, this is when actually uh, we place trades if there's anything to trade and look for wheel opportunities so we'll explain more as we go here but uh, let's let just go go back here and uh, let's uh, bring up PowerX Optimizer. And uh, so we, we do have, uh, I mean, this is the tool that we use every day in our trading. You know this, you have seen it before. So there are the two tabs on top. There's the PowerX Analyzer and there's the Wheel Analyzer. And we start with the PowerX Analyzer. Click on Run Scanner. Uh, we, we have some default settings here uh, where uh, you just click on Reset to Default. This way you have the, the exact settings that we use. And uh, this is where we scan and we are looking for short-term swing trading opportunities. And that's uh, really this morning, it says the scanner did not find any symbols uh, matching our criteria. And that's actually a good thing, right? Because when this happens, markets are usually choppy. <laughs> Go figure, right? All well, the best entries have already occurred and nobody likes to be late to the party. And uh, we know you want to trade, we want to trade. So this is why we look for wheel trades or you could lower your standards or criteria, but uh, we, we don't recommend this. Uh, and Mark, I mean, I'm not surprised that right now there's nothing popping up because we are looking here for short term swing trade opportunities. Exactly. And with the way that the markets have been moving and uh, just uh, you know, pulling back, uh, what we're kind of looking for now is, is to see if there's a little bit of a stabilization and a bit of a rally that that would uh, open the door to some more opportunities and uh, give us an opportunity to get a couple of runners. But right now, uh, nothing. And that that's OK, because uh, we trade another strategy that is a great complement to the trend following strategies that we look for. Right. And this is where if we if we talk about uh, the uh, the three pillars of uh, of trading, uh, just to give you an idea what we have figured out over the years, uh, well, what really helps with trading is uh, number one, of course, you need to have a trading strategy. And what's better than one trading strategy, it's actually having two trading strategies. Because if you have a trend following strategy where we are waiting for a trending market right now, I mean, the markets are super choppy, as you have seen. So this is why uh, we like to use the Power X strategy. Uh, which is a trend following strategy. And in order to deploy a trend following strategy successfully, you need to have a trending market. And that's not what we have right now. And then we have the wheel strategy. And this pretty much works in, in any market condition. And uh, so this is what we are trading uh, just pretty much all the time, right? So this is our, our bread and butter strategy here. So these are the two strategies that we like to use. Now let's talk about the or you want to add anything to this, Mark? Yeah, well, I, just with the wheel strategy, uh, some traders have brought up the concern with the market uh, being down uh, and the wheel strategy. And this is where when you, you said that really it could be traded in any market condition. Uh, if the market's going sideways, the wheel strategy could be profitable. 
If the market's going up a little bit, it could be profitable. If it's going higher oh, significantly, it could be profitable. If the market pulls back a little bit, it's profitable. The concern if there's there if there is a big drop, right? But this is why the focus on stock selection and strike selection is so important because if there's volatility, there's a ton of premium. So I think it can be traded in any environment, but that fifth environment is where you have to be picky. You have to wait for good opportunities and we'll look for some. Right. And uh, I mean, I don't think that right now we're in a crash market. I mean, the crash market this is what happened uh, in 2020 when we had the pandemic. Right. I mean, this is when the yeah. market crashed. And we'll, we'll talk cool. about this in a moment of what we do then when the market crashes. Actually, uh, just uh, very briefly, this is when we uh, use a strategy that's called Theta Kings. And uh, I'll explain more about this here in a little bit. But uh, that's the strategy that we like to use for this. OK, second pillar here, uh, we would like to have powerful tools. And, uh, you know, the tools that we like to use is our PowerX Optimizer. And we are also using TradingView here. You see us using these tools all the time. And uh, then finally, the third is having the right mindset. And we'll talk about this more a little bit later. But uh, let's just uh, run through our existing positions here according to the wheel. So we don't have any positions according to the PowerX strategy, but we do have a few positions according to the wheel strategy. And uh, let, let's talk about the first one here. So the first one is BX Blackstone. So this is where we got assigned at uh, at 110 and uh, it has been moving lower. So we have not been able to sell calls this week just yet because uh, let's go back and uh, just talk about uh, the wheel strategy uh, just in a nutshell. So the wheel strategy and what we do here is uh, first of all, number one, okay, we sell puts, uh, put options and collect premium. Then number two, uh, we might get assigned or not, right? And we'll talk about this. And today is Friday, so it's assignment day. This is really good. Uh, so if assigned, we sell call options and collect premium. And we'll, we'll talk about these steps here in more detail as we go through this. So in uh, in MX, uh, in BX, uh, we have been assigned at 110. So we sold puts, uh, did step number one. Uh, we did step number two, got assigned and have not yet been able to sell calls against uh, our existing position. But this morning, it looks good. I mean, we're moving higher, so we might be able to do that today. And this is why we're glad that we are here to you uh, with you trading live together. All right, uh, another one, Mark. Let's talk about MT. Sure. So MT, I would just uh, trading in a solid range with some nice support all year long, um, even going back uh, to, gosh, uh, June of, of last year. Uh, so some nice support. We decided to sell the 26 put that is expiring tomorrow. Right now, it, yesterday it closed at 26.91, so 91 cents above the strike that we sold. Uh, Pre-market, it's up a little bit. So this will probably expire worthless. And uh, then we get to keep the entire premium. If it does start to fall during the day and it closes below $26, and we're the proud owner of uh, MT shares at 26. Doesn't look like that will be the case, though. So. Yeah. All right. So uh, we do have, uh, what, seven more minutes before the markets open. So let's take a look at the next one. So uh, NVIDIA here uh, got assigned at uh, 195 Yep, 195. So trying to sell calls at 195 or higher. You've also collected some really nice premium on this one. So your break even, uh, you know, even though the stock's down, the break even is uh, lower than that 195 strike. So this is where when we collect uh, premium on the put side, when we start the trade or when we sell calls after we're in the trade, we can bring down our break even lower and lower. So uh, we still wanted to get up to 195, but we start to see a nice profitable move with a, a smaller push higher. Right. And, and this is exactly uh, where you said in one of the upcoming versions, it's coming very, very soon. We have a, a trading log integrated in this. And here you see the NVIDIA trade. I'm uh, trying to zoom in a little bit. And you see that on this NVIDIA trade uh, that has been open since April 20th, I collected uh, a little bit more than $6,420 in premium. So the break even is at $184. Uh, 
So that's working out really well thus far. Yeah, good to see your BX uh, break even too, 104.68. So yeah. we don't need to do this. I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm looking to, to try and sell calls at 110. Right now, pre-market, BX is at 102. So you could, if you wanted to, look to sell calls above the break even. And that's right there. Like BX is no problem at all. But we really want to go to 110 or higher so we could squeeze out as much profit as possible on this one. Right. All right. Uh, going back and going down the list. So we talked about NVIDIA. So then we have uh, TPR. So TPR, interesting, uh, assigned at 37. Uh, TPR had a really good day yesterday, uh, closing at 30.63. And we'll, we'll see where we are pre-market with this. So uh, it might move have, have to move a little bit higher, but then we can uh, collect uh, some premium here on selling calls. So this is why it's great that we are live with you here because uh, we, we might uh, be able to sell some calls here. All right, finally, uh, Visa. So Visa, we are still in step number one. This is where we sold puts at the 187.50 expiring today. So if it stays above 187.50, uh, we just collect the premium, keep the premium and uh, start over. So it, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. So right now we're basically assigned in three positions. So let's uh, just uh, write this down here. Okay, so... currently on the trade year account. And then we'll talk about the other position uh, as well so that we don't forget about this. But uh, currently on the trade year account, uh, let's see, let's change this over. Okay, so uh, we have uh, five positions, three assigned positions. And then we have two open puts that uh, well, we'll see. We might uh, be able to close today or they expire worthless. Now, let's uh, also talk about the uh, the other positions uh, that, that I have in the other account, in the uh, Tastyworks account. So first of all, ARCF is a position. So this is where uh, ARCF initially got assigned up here, uh, have uh, sold some more puts, a partial rescue mission. Uh, break e uh, cost basis right now at forty dollars forty one cents, and uh, yesterday it was trading as low as sixteen forty seven. So definitely hit by uh, Coinbase, the Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin slump. So we'll, we'll see what happens here today. Uh, seems that yesterday uh, they they had a decent day, and uh, it's it's difficult with the see with the volume. So let's uh, just get out of the volume and uh, let's see where we are today here. Uh, the other one that we have is LVS. So LVS also in that account, um, has been sliding, has been nicely in the range and uh, broke the range recently with uh, with the downslide. So let's see if some buyers are stepping in here. And uh, this might be a couple of weeks until we can start selling some calls against it here. Yeah. And then oh, yeah. uh, finally, right. our friend, right, 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 right. <laughs> so good news from right, right? Uh, so good news, the deal closed. So yesterday, pretty nice uptrend, but uh, I'm still, uh, way down on, on right here. So this needs to rally only another 600%. <laughs> sure, <laughs> so we're getting sure. there. But they got the lifeline they were looking for, at least uh, uh, some new blood. Uh, so that was a positive. That's why it was up uh, so big. All right. So we have two more minutes before the markets open. And what we like to do with our positions is just see, do we have any massive surprises in pre-market trading? Uh, like, for example, with Twitter, right? So as an example, is, is there any news on Blackstone that it would gap this morning to 115? It could happen because if so, we would have to take care of this right away in the, next, in the first 30 seconds of the open. So no, it looks good. It is up here pre-market. We are looking at MT also just up a little bit uh, less than 1%. So no surprises there. Uh, let's take a look at NVIDIA at 167, so up 3%, but also not this gap uh, up or down that uh, might force us to take action right away. Uh, TPR slightly down here, uh, what, 0.4%, so also no surprises there, and Visa slightly up. So it doesn't seem that there's any massive surprises uh, going into the open that we need to be aware of. Yeah, and Marcus, one thing, uh, just because I've mentioned it in the stock market updates, I'm all, I'm in AMD rather than okay. NVIDIA. So I'm looking at uh, calls potentially for AMD. Your position that's basically equivalent is NVIDIA. Right. 
All right, so uh, looking at uh, at the account here, um, we see, let's uh, just zoom in. So I did have some profit taking orders for the two put positions uh, that I was trading here, but I canceled them this morning because on the last day, I do not want to take profits. This is when I let them rather expire, especially uh, with Visa. Uh, let's go back here to PowerX Optimizer. Uh, Visa definitely nicely trading. We see it gapped open here. So there's no need right now to give up the final 10%. So uh, we will definitely let this one expire. Same as MT. That's why I canceled these two orders. Usually we have the 90% profit taking orders in the market here. All right, so markets just opened like a minute ago or 10 seconds ago. Uh, so first of all, let's see where the markets open so we are taking a look at the at the spx here and uh, we see okay up uh, what a percent from yesterday uh nasdaq up 1.7 percent so all markets are thus far in the first few minutes up but uh that's exactly what you said mark i mean we have, we have seen this yesterday right i mean uh, in the first few minutes it doesn't really matter of what's happening here because uh, let me just bring up a a five minute chart of the S&P. So we see that yesterday, first we were moving higher, I think even the day before, and then we had the slide in the afternoon. Yeah, it, this we've been all over the place, never a dull moment, uh, at least in uh, 2022. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So let's see with, with our existing positions, uh, let's see if they are moving high enough so that we can actually sell some calls because Nvidia seems to have a good start into the day. So we are on a five minute chart here. So that's where um, we will take a look for new opportunities to establish here. But right now, let's just see if there's a possibility to sell calls in Nvidia. And this is where we hop over to, to the calculator uh, look at Nvidia. So uh, the strike purchase price, uh, let me just zoom in a little bit so that you can see it. So uh, the stock purchase price was $195. I don't think that we get any premium for today where we are expiring today. So we go out for another week. Uh, I own 600 shares and uh, want to sell uh, calls at 195. And uh, we see here, the minimum premium that we need to get is $1.30. So uh, let's just put this in here, uh, this would give us 30% annualized. And now I can just click on place order, which will auto automatically open here uh, my trading platform. And this is where I see everything pre-filled and I get the bid and the ask and we see, oops, it's only 74 cents over 80 cents here this morning. So with this, uh, I mean, if we would get only 75 cents, right? So we can plug it in there. And then one of the next versions, this will also all automatic. We would only get 17% annualized. So with 17% annualized mark for us, that's kind of a pass. So not doing anything there yeah. just yet. Agreed. We like that 30% minimum. That's why it's highlighted red uh, as a um, as a no. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move over to uh, to BX and uh, see what BX is doing here this morning. So BX uh, trading at 102.46. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, let's take a look at uh, at BX and see if it is possible for us to sell calls here. So we got assigned at 110. I have 1,000 shares. Again, I highly doubt that there's anything um, for today. So we are moving over to May 20th, and we see that we need to get a minimum of 75 cents to meet our criteria here and uh, this is where okay let's just go over there and see what we can get right now oh that's not bad at all look at this mark we can get 85 yeah. cents that's what i've been looking at um considering the 85 blackstone okay. got up to 103 it, it's still trying to find some direction or the direction is up but trying to see if uh, we can make uh, new highs for the day or if we're pulling back. Okay, so if we replace this order, we can sell calls against our existing position. Um, we would collect $850 for a week. That's not bad at all. And we would make 35%. But this is when we like to uh, switch over basically to a five minute chart to see, okay, what's, uh, what's Blackstone doing here right now? I mean, is it pushing higher? 
And um, do, do you want to sell it right away or do you want to wait for a minute, a few minutes to see what's happening? I, I'm, uh, I'm going back and forth, uh, Marcus, because, uh, well, I'm a little bit uh, swayed by uh, my plan next week. And that is I'm going to be traveling and I'm going to be in Paris. So I, I kind of want to get some calls off so I don't have to monitor things <laughs> next week. Um, otherwise, if that wasn't the case, I'd probably be a little more aggressive watching things and, and seeing where we're at. I, okay. I, I think I like 85 cents. So you're going for it. I, I think I'm going to hold off. Uh, I mean, I want to hold off uh, for a few more minutes to see if it rallies a little bit higher. I mean, we're up only, I say only two and a half percent. Blackstone is, uh, I mean, this is a stock that can easily move four or five percent in a day. But yeah, you're going I'm to putting it in right a now? order. I'm going to, I'm updating our mastermind spreadsheet. Okay. Um, I'm going to put an order in. All right. I'm going to hold off on this one because I'll, I'll still be here Monday morning. Are you leaving Monday morning already? No, I'll be joining you Monday morning, but I, I know that on travel days, it gets a little crazy for me. All right. <laughs> cool. So you're taking this one. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, TPR, Tapestry. Uh, so let me just see if it is possible for me to sell calls there. So while you're doing this, so you're, you're placing the order here. So 37, again, I want to go out to May 20th. I uh, need a minimum of uh, 25 cents. And uh, let's see where we are. So with 25 cents, I would get 30% annualized. So let's see. Uh, at this point, we are bid ask is zero over 25, but uh, realistically, it's 15 cents right now. This is the last traded price. So if we are going over here and uh, punch in the 15 cents, so this means that uh, it's only 18%. So nothing really. And I, I see that here accidentally I switched over from May 13th. So I need to go back to May 20th. So um, BX Blackstone, the one that you're doing, oh, I want to see if I can get a little bit more, if maybe I can get a, a dollar or a dollar 10. So we'll see. Sometimes you're right. Sometimes <laughs> I'm right. And, and this is the thing, I mean, with, with the strategy, I mean, if you're happy with 35%, uh, you go for it. I mean, if you're happy with $850 in, in a week, Good. Why not? Right. Cool. Agreed. Right. I am filled. You got filled. Yep. Okay. Well, let's see. It's uh, still moving higher. So let's uh, let's see where we are right now. Okay. So it's eighty over ninety one cents. See, this is where I could put a fishing order in here, and I say, uh, you know what? I have uh, ten contracts. Okay. I'm I'm being super super aggressive here. I say, if I get a dollar fifty today. That would be $1,500. I'm going to do this. And I'm willing to, to change this order here. But let me submit this. Uh, you see, this would give me $1,500. I like this. So let, let's let's put this in. And I'll see if I get filled. Uh, this might... Uh, ha and maybe I'll, I'll come down because uh, if you go to PowerX Optimizer... Uh, let me just bring up the, uh, the calculator here on full screen. Then it's a little bit easier to see. See if if I can get a dollar fifty, right? Thousand five hundred dollars. That would be sixty one percent. I I would be very happy with this, but I'm willing to lower it. But I'm not willing to lower it to eighty five. I'll let you do the eighty five. That's fine. <laughs> okay. So uh, the other uh, two positions that we have, Nvidia and TPR, uh, not much happening there. So uh, let's actually take a look at the scanner and see if we have any stocks that are meeting our criteria. And I'm, I'm uh, going to flip over here uh, to the iPad so that I can show you a little bit more of what exactly we're looking for. So here I am on the iPad and uh, you see this is where we can look for filters for the scanner. Oops. There we go. I thought I could do this. <laughs> okay. Why not? So no problem. We are switching back over to the screen share. And I figure out what my iPad, oh, there it is. So my iPad just came back. Okay, so if we click on the scanner, it says right now, no stocks meet our filter criteria. Okay, interesting. So this is where we take a look at the filter and see what criteria do we have here. And uh, I wanna just uh, bring this a little bit higher because there we also have our default settings. And uh, let me see, it seems that it lost my, my little pen here. And now it is connected again. And there we go. Okay. 
So we have some filter criteria here that we put in because we are looking for value stocks. So, um, oh, I see that I have the, the strike from 15 to 40. I did this to, to illustrate a point the other day. So let me just go back here to default because this way uh, I have the default settings that I usually use every day. And uh, we're going back there. So the strike, we want to see a minimum of $15, a max. We don't care. Right now our max is uh, $400. Want to see a minimum premium of 10 cents. Expiration, want to go for next week's expiration because today I don't think that we'll get a whole lot if we are um, if we are scanning for today premium. So we want to get premium for a week out. Uh, want to make sure that uh, we get some, some dividends so that we are trading dividend stocks. And uh, you know, it seems that I lost my pen here for a moment. So we'll go there. A minimum ROI of 30, a market cap of 5 billion. And uh, right now, a max cap of the PE ratio of $50. So uh, 50, uh, so PE ratio of 50. Uh, that's what we are looking for. And uh, this is when uh, we switch over and see what does the scanner give us? Nothing. So if there's nothing, which is not unusual on an update, and uh, let, just, uh, let me just explain it, then we go back. So uh, just um, general. Hey, Marcus. Comments, yeah? I hate to interrupt. I'm sending a, an alert um, for Mastermind. Do you have okay. a fishing order at 150? Did you place that? Yeah, I placed a fishing order okay. at 150. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. I have it there. Uh, let's just quickly see uh, before we move on where we are with Blackstone. Okay, 95 over, I uh, see, dollar ten, dollar eighteen. So we, yeah. we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on this. Okay, uh, so general, uh, I want to say rule of thumb. Uh, it's best to sell puts on a down day. And I know that this is super, super scary because on a down day, this where you say, oh, everything is going down. I don't want to sell puts. Uh, well, what if I'm getting assigned, right? And uh, it's also best to sell calls on an up day. And uh, this is where we go back and uh, just see, okay, what are the markets doing right now? Okay, Blackstone is pushing higher, but what is the the S&P doing. Okay, so it's definitely up. So we are up 1.3%. We're up 2% in the NASDAQ, pushing higher here. We're up on the Dow. So I'm not too surprised that we don't see anything on the scanner with our default settings. But this is where we can uh, play around with the default settings and say, instead of just looking for dividend stocks, uh, let's go for all stocks and see if there's anything popping up, uh, whether stocks have dividends or not. And uh, I still got nothing. Wow. Okay. Let's uh, maybe see if uh, if we increase the PE ratio and go up to 100. That's another criteria that sometimes I like to use and uh, see if there are any opportunities. I still got nothing, Mark. Yeah, it's this uh, move higher. I, I, I know you don't. Uh, we don't normally look at the aggressive side, but um, that you you should have you. Oh, I have UPS. Okay, well, well, it'll pop up here in a minute. So the scanner refreshes every two minutes and uh, shows us basically the, the best opportunities. So you said you had UPS, so we can take a look at this here uh, really quick. Uh, no, I don't have any options found. Uh, let me just see if I have some weird criteria. No, I've expired. Which one did you get? Oh, I still have, uh, I still have the 40. That's why. There we go. Okay. Let's go to, to dividends all, see what's coming up here. So you had uh, UPS on the aggressive. Yeah, you see the 170. Okay. So this is where, um, again, when we are selling puts here, so this is where, uh, let's go back here, uh, selling puts and collect premium. So we have uh, two rules here is uh, number one, only sell puts on stocks that you want to own. So this is super important here that uh, we do this. And uh, so there's a few things how we decide whether we want to own stocks. Um, so first of all, we want to see that the company itself is profitable. We want to see that uh, the company preferably pays a, a dividend. And then also we want to see that we have a, a rather low PE ratio uh, that is a price to earnings ratio. 
And typically we want to see uh, lower than 50. I'm okay going to lower than 100. Uh, so let me just uh, show you how exactly we do this. So here for UPS that it has popped up on the aggressive scanner, we can just click on the megaphone. When we do, it opens up Google Finance and uh, we can get some important information. So here we see it has a low PE ratio of 14.42, this for UPS. It pays a dividend of 3.44. And if we are going down here, we see the quarterly results over the past five quarters and it looks good. They're producing nice revenue. There's the green bars and then we have the orange bars and the orange bars are actually showing us the profit. If you look over the past five years, we see that UPS still producing nice revenue, had a little bit of a problem with the profitability in 2020, not as profitable, but they survived. So Mark, what do you think? Is that a good company to own? Yeah, I mean, I think that for me, if I'm looking at the last five years and there was net nice net income, even if in 2020 in the pandemic, it had some issues, uh, the four out of the last five with 2020 being an outlier is a little bit down. That to me isn't a concern. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's go back to the chart right now. Let's take a look at the chart because now uh, we are getting at uh, the second point. Uh, so first of all, only sell puts on stocks that you want to own and only sell strike prices at which price you want to own the stock. That is not English at all, right? It's close enough. <laughs> okay. All right. How about so, the? Okay, g give me a better expression here. Just say the instead of which. Okay. There you go. Good. Fair enough. So, so at the price. So let's take a look at this here and see if we want to place this trade uh, that popped up here on the scanner. Uh, so we go over to PowerX Optimizer and UPS. Uh, I mean, over the past few years, before the pandemic, they have been trading in a range between, what, 125 and 90, somewhere around this. Then during the pandemic, everybody started ordering everything, right? I mean, this is when we discovered, oh my gosh, it's true. We don't need to leave the house at all. We can have everything delivered, which gave UPS a, a big boost. So we had a new range here that was established between, uh, what, around 155 and 177. Now it even moved to higher, but it's it's very wild swing. So the question here is now, do you want to own UPS at 170? Mark, what do you think? You know, like, so this one, uh, it's with, with looking at support and looking at that move lower, I think the 170 is aggressive. Yeah, because this is where we have the blue line. So the blue line always shows you the uh, lowest closing price over the last eight weeks. And the blue line gives you kind of a visual idea of where possible support levels are. And this is what we like to do. Uh, so uh, when we look at uh, the prices, we are looking at, uh, at support levels. Right. And if you're looking here at UPS, I, I would say uh, a support level of uh, probably here 155. Yeah. would be a much better support level. Agreed. Okay. So another one popped up, uh, WPM, uh, Wheaton Precious Metals. Oh, that's actually kind of interesting. So let's go through our steps again. Step number one, do we want to own the company? Let's see. What do we want to see? We want to see a low PE ratio. Okay, 2348. Want to see a dividend yield of 1.54. So there is a dividend. They are paying a dividend. Holy cannoli. I mean, okay, let's take a look at the annual. That is interesting. Look at their profit margins. Holy macaroni. <laughs> I mean, because not good in 2017 and 2019, but here when you make $1.2 billion and more than 50% of this is profit. I mean, what do you think about the company? Let's, uh, let's read a little bit more up on them, what, uh, what they do. So it's a Canadian multinational precious metals streaming company. What is a precious metals streaming company? I streaming company that I don't know that that term for precious metals. All right. But it produces uh, 26 million ounces and sells over 29 million ounces of silver mined by other companies. OK, so what do you think, Mark, this company uh, just in general, do you want to own this company? Sure. I, I mean, the. Uh, nice dividend yield and I, okay the dividend yield is not what we're after right? right so some traders who are very 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 conservative with the wheel 
they want to trade the wheel because of the dividend. The dividend isn't going to help us make money here, but if it does pay a dividend, it means that they're distributing money to shareholders, which is a good thing. And even if the stock falls and they're still paying the dividend, the dividend yield goes higher. So this is why I think the dividend yield of 1.5% is attractive as a wheel trader, but that's not just the only thing we're looking to get. I, I think it's solid. All right. So they're falling today in a market that is overall up. And this is probably because they reported earnings. No, they reported earnings on May 5th, actually. Okay. Yeah. So, but super interesting. Okay. So the second question is, do we want to own this company at that strike price that has been popping up? And uh, it disappeared right now. But uh, do you remember what was the strike price? 37, like 3650. Okay. What do you think? That's, uh, that's actually a pretty good strike price because we see that uh, pretty much uh, ever since we came out of the pandemic, it has been trading in that range. Yeah, I I like the strike. I like the chart, except for the last couple of days. Yeah, okay. So let's talk about the last couple of days. Well, what's happening here that you don't like this anymore? Well, we, we know that in this market environment, there is a lot of volatility. We can get swings lower. We can get a rally like we're having today. We can get another push lower. Uh, this was a pretty sharp decline from 45 down to 39. Um, so that tells me that it, it's possible that it continues, right? We do have strong support, but I would rather see a little more, not just a, a sharp decline from $52 a share down to 39 in the last couple of weeks, but a little more stability around these support levels. Um, I, I just think that right now in this market environment, um, there's, you know, we could wait a day and get better opportunities on Monday. All right, let's do this. So while we're waiting, let me just close a few tabs here and uh, let's actually see um, how we do it. Oh, you market, are, are you interested in it? What? Are you interested in the trade? No, no, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm with okay. you. I want to wait here. I just want to see uh, how we are doing here with uh, with my little Blackstone, where Blackstone is still. Okay, oh, we're getting there. Look at this. Yeah, dollar three over dollar twenty four. Maybe I can get my dollar fifty right now. Last traded price a dollar twenty three. Okay, that's good. We're getting there. High for the day. Uh, let, let's just see. It's a high for the day. So uh, if you go back to the calculator, because uh, well, let's just say I would get a dollar twenty five. I would get a dollar twenty-five. That's fifty-one percent, and would give me one thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Okay, now we're talking. Uh, so I'm willing to lower it because we're well above the thirty percent. Uh, so I'm at fifty-one percent. Uh, let's uh, take a look here at the five-minute chart of uh, of Blackstone, just to get an idea of what they're doing. If they're still moving high, they're still pushing higher. All right, I'm holding out for a dollar fifty for now. <laughs> but I, I will I will lower it uh, if uh, if we see that this is turning around. But this is looking super, super strong. So I'm quite happy with this one. All right. Uh, so also, it seems that NVIDIA is pushing higher. What did we say? How much do we need on NVIDIA? So let's double check. Uh, we said on NVIDIA, we need to have at least $1.30. So let's uh, go over and place the order. All right. We're getting to $1.25. Okay. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. I think I, I think here, as, as this might move higher, uh, let's see. I, I would be very happy with 250. And I know that you probably say, you're greedy. I am. <laughs> <laughs> be greedy when others are fearful. And be fearful when others are greedy. What do you think right now is the market sentiment, Mark? Are others uh, fearful or are they greedy? I think traders are fearful right now. Today, I mean, it's hard to say that today when the Nasdaq's almost up three percent, but we know that uh, you know just a day ago traders were freaking out. <laughs> All right, so I'm greedy. If everybody is fearful, I'm greedy. I I will try uh, two fifty here uh, because this would give me also one thousand five hundred dollars. So between these two trades, if I can collect $1,500 until next Friday on uh, NVIDIA and I could collect $1,500 on VX, I mean, that's $3,000 in a week. And uh, same as you, I'll be traveling next week. So you're going to Paris, I'm going to Germany. So I'll, I'll put this order in and uh, just see if we can get this. Uh, because if so, uh, let's go back to PowerX Optimizer. 
so in this case, I would also on this one get 58%. Okay, cool. So we have these uh, two orders working in the market. So we have BX at a at a dollar fifty, and we have Nvidia at two fifty. Okay, so we have uh, two calls that I'm trying to sell. You already sold BX. How is your yes. AMD doing, Mark? I I'm watching it. AMD's up almost five percent, which is nice. But we to sell one of four calls, it needs to move a little more. And hey, Marcus, I wanted to mention, uh, just throwing it out there. When you were college shopping with your daughter and I did uh, one of the stock market updates, I mentioned Delta uh, to kind of gauge how much the stock needs to move to get what you want. And for you to get what you want with the buck 50 in uh, BX, BX in theory needs to go up another buck. So it needs to go up to 105.70. I'm not saying that that's not possible, but just uh, you, you might you might reconsider. I might, but not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. No, I mean, uh, just to be honest, yeah, uh, we don't have to be too greedy. So uh, if I get, get uh, for example, uh, if I can get $1.25, that would be 1250 So I'm, I'm willing to consider $1.25. But right now, uh, we are still in a strong market. BX is still going up. So I, I want to see. Same here sure. with uh, NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is going up. Uh, MT, I mean, we could probably close this. If we find a new trade uh, to to sell puts on, I will close MT. And there's probably also a possibility to to close out Visa here. Yeah. So let's uh, let's take a look at, at these really quick uh, because v Visa would be the easiest. Yeah, you see this where it says 90%. Uh, this is in uh, MT. 90% of the max profit, I could close this. Visa is at 95% of the max profit. So I could close this, uh, free up some buying power because I, I like to have up to five positions and then establish a new one. But you see, if we don't find anything exciting new here on the scanner because we have an update today, might as well just keep it and uh, get the, the few cents here. Again, it's exactly. a few dollars, but uh, why, why give it up? Uh, might buy me a Snickers. For that all right <laughs> mark here is another company that uh, popped up on the scanner and you know i'm loosening the criteria here a little bit uh oh i already went, went for dividends all uh let me just go for um wait go marcus for can you have a snickers with your keto diet diet no <laughs> wait 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 how's the keto diet going uh it's going really really well i'm, I'm very very okay. surprised uh so it it it's great. It's much better than I thought it would be. I mean, first of all, yes, losing a ton of weight. So I'm very happy with this. But secondly, I have tons of energy and I love this. I mean, usually in nice. the afternoon, I was a little bit sluggish and uh, I, I I take naps in the afternoon. Usually I do. I mean, right now, no. And the other thing is uh, what's really, really cool is when I go to bed, I mean, I'm not tired uh, when I go to bed. I just say, you know what? It's 11 o'clock. It's time to go to bed. Go to bed, fall asleep right away uh, within two or three minutes. And I must say, OK, these are pretty nice side effects. These were side effects that I was uh, that I was actually looking for. So awesome. But hey, awesome. We'll, we'll stop the whole keto thing next week uh, when I'm in Germany. There's no way I'll have beer. I'll have the German food and all this. So, I mean, there, there will be a, a four week keto pause. OK, nice, um, nice. So let's see, uh, Mark popped up. So let's take yeah. a look at, at Mark here and see if we want to take this one. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at the company. If you like Mark, okay, low PE ratio of 16.6. So it's below 50. Nice dividend yield. Okay, uh, let's take a look. Oh, nice quarterly, uh, nice annual uh, revenue and profit. So what do you think? Is yep. this a company that you want to own? Sure. Uh, financials, sh absolutely. Yeah, you see, usually we like to uh, we stay away from uh, biotech or pharmaceutical companies, but Merck uh, just has such a broad variety. I mean, it's not like BioNTech uh, that that only it's more like a one trick pony that has the the COVID vaccine, right? So yeah, we'll, we'll those see. are the one trick ponies are the ones you have to be careful of waiting for phase three clinical trials where the stock's up, just waiting for for something to be announced. But Merck's different, right? But let's take a look at the chart. Do we want to own Merck? Do you want to own Merck at 87.50? No, it's the wheel's the wrong strategy if you wanted to trade Merck. Yeah, I think there's more for a swing trade. Uh, so so this would work. But 
I would be way more interested to buy it at the lower end of the range here at around 72. Yeah. And this is, yeah. as you said, market in these market conditions, do we still trade the wheel? Absolutely. But as you can see, we are being picky. We are being picky. We're not just taking anything that pops up on the scanner and say, yeah. So Mark, uh, for me, it's a no. Uh, UPS, uh, what did we say here? It popped up earlier. We also said right now it's a no for us, so we can just flag it. Let's get rid of this for a moment. All right, cool. Uh, OK, I'm just curious, how is uh, my BX trade going. Are we getting there? Now you said that I need to go up to 105.70. Okay, let me just see uh, of where we are with these uh, two trades. So let me just uh, see. I want to have a dollar fifty. I last traded price here dollar thirty. Right now pulling back a little bit. Okay, so I still think that my dollar twenty five would be possible. And let's see what is happening here. Okay, uh, so. Uh, wow. Okay. There it is bit 124 by 128. So not bad, not bad. I, I'm holding out here. I'm holding out a little bit. I want to see what happens because I, I think that today we might see another relief rally because if you, if you look at all our positions here, I mean, uh, look, look at this arc F nicely up today, almost 10% LVS up, uh, what 8%, uh, we have ride, uh, being up today, uh, 6%. We have BX being up 5%, MT being up, NVIDIA being up 6%, TPR being up 1.5%, Visa being up. I mean, this is looking good. So I'm, I'm okay waiting here a little bit. That works. Yeah, I'm letting uh, Visa and MT expire worthless. Yeah, I, I don't think because especially since uh, there's nothing going on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. I, I want to just go back to here and I, I want to uh, talk for a moment about this, uh, this Theta Kings. Let's see, where did I write this down? There, when we go to a crash. So uh, Theta Kings is, uh, is a strategy that we actually traded uh, during the pandemic. You remember, Mark, when the markets yeah. were crashing? Yep. Okay. And uh, this is where uh, here is, uh, is the account statement. I hope that you can read it. Uh, I, I will zoom in a little bit. So uh, I traded it back in the days. Uh, this was here in 2020. So from March 20th through March 29th, I traded this strategy. So as you can see, that's uh, just a little bit under two months. So around eight weeks. Does that sound about right, Mark? Yeah. So I traded this strategy on a rather small account. So uh, this account had a starting value of 25,000. And uh, the realized PL with this particular strategy was $18,959. So, as you can see, that's a 75% increase in the account in just under eight weeks. So, this is a very, very, very specific strategy that is perfect for when the market crash. Let's take a look at this March 20th through May 29th, um, just so that we see of what happened there. So, we're going back to a daily chart. Uh, let's go to the to the SPX and uh, let's go to March. There we go. Okay, so March 20th, right here. Okay, so let me just mark this till May 29th. Okay, so I just want to show you May 29th. Here we go. This is when I traded it. Right. And as you can see, doesn't this here look very, very familiar to what we see right now? I mean, let's just measure this move here in the in the S&P. And uh, so the S&P here was down. Uh, what is it? Thirty five percent. So more than right now, we are only down, what, 17, 18 percent. But it, it looks very similar. So this is perfect right towards the end of a down move or of a crash here. And uh, this is where it goes back to. I mean, do you believe that right now we could be close to an end of this move? Well, we can wait a few more days, but this is where Theta Kings is really a great strategy. So we are not trading it just yet, Mark, but I, I think it's worth keeping an eye on it. What do you think? Agreed. Uh, so you we, know, it's, but we need a little more. So a lot of people, because they traded Theta Kings with us um, or they, they learn about the strategy, they're, they're really interested in it. When it pop, when uh, VIX pops above thirty, but we really want to see the VIX even expands beyond that because one thing with Theta Kings that that's real nice is that when there is that volatility expansion and worry in the market, 
we could sell puts maybe 30% below a stock or 40% below the current price, even 50% lower because of that fear. And that's where Theta Kings just gave us awesome opportunities. But we need to we need to pop more, it's not just a little blip above 30. Yeah. So, but I mean, it could happen because you see markets have been super nervous. We could actually jump up to 36 and 40. And if we are going into this range, then it definitely becomes very, very interesting. I yeah. mean, of course, if we look back of uh, what happened here uh, in uh, in March 2020, uh, the volatility was spiking to what, 90? We, we don't need this. We don't need this. But we need to get a little bit closer to 40 uh, to be able to do this strategy. I would Anyhow. agree. So the, the reason why I'm bringing this up is here. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll take a look at another trades here in just a moment. But I know that uh, some of you right now already have the PowerX Optimizer. And if you have the PowerX Optimizer, I want to give you a very special gift. Because here's what I thought. Since you are already a loyal customer, I'd like to surprise you. So this is where I told the team that uh, for this weekend, so basically sometime today, they will give you access to Theta King. So if you are an existing customer, uh, you will get access to this course that we did back almost two years ago, almost to the day. Uh, so two years ago where I showed exactly of how I do this. Now, if you are not yet um, a PowerX customer and you say, you know what, this all looks interesting. As you can see in the scrolling ticker here below, we have a special deal for you. So if you choose to invest in the PowerX Optimizer, which is the tool that we use every day, as you can see, and now you know how we are using it, and we'll go back to trading here in just a moment. But if you uh, invest in this, uh, then you will get Theta Kings for free as well. So that's usually a, a $3,994 value. And uh, this weekend until Sunday, May 15th, until Sunday, May 15th, this is where you get get both for $1,997. So uh, see the, the scrolling ticker. If you go to rockwelltrading.com slash special, you will find more information about this. Um, so take a look at this. Check it out. If you were always on the fence and say, do I really need this tool, PowerX Optimizer? Yes, you do. I, I mean, I couldn't trade without the tool. Mark, do you do this? I mean, it no. would just take so much longer and I wouldn't I wouldn't be as successful as, as I am with trading with this tool. Absolutely. Okay, so let's see if there's anything else popping up. Okay, I want to see what is uh, what is BX doing. Okay, let's go to a five minute. Ha 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 ha. Where do I need to be, Mark? 105.70, one oh five eighty. Okay, getting there. Uh, let's take a look and then we'll see if there's some some other trades. I uh, just want to quickly see. I'm not yet filled on these orders. Let's see where Blackstone is trading right now. Okay, I want to have a dollar for uh, fifty right now. It was trading at one twenty over one thirty uh, one thirty seven. <laughs> High of day one thirty nine. High of the day one thirty nine. All right, let's see. So that's good. Uh, where is uh, Nvidia trading? And again, I'm willing to lower it uh, a little bit. So I want to have two fifty. I think that this is. Uh, yeah, I think I'm a little bit too aggressive here. I might have to lower this to a dollar twenty-five, a dollar fifty. Let's see how much I would get there uh, if I lower this to. Well, let's just get rid of the puts. So uh, let's look at the calls to what a dollar. You probably need a five-dollar move. Yeah. Okay. Four, five-dollar move. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Well, with with the markets up, uh, not much to to check out here. I'm not too surprised by this, uh, but it's refreshing every two minutes. Uh, but right now, yeah, my, my bet is more on uh, selling calls because this yep. is where we go back to what do you do in an update, right? Uh, so it's best to sell calls on an update. So I'll, I'll stay focused on this. Uh, let's see, what is TPR doing? Okay, TPR is not making new highs, so might take a little bit here. Uh, let's see what NVIDIA is doing. Okay, so NVIDIA needs to uh, go a little bit higher. MT, yeah, this will expire worthless today. But again, since there's nothing else, Mark, I don't think that we need to uh, free up the buying power here. We could. Yeah, I, I'm letting them go. Uh, I don't, even if we get a huge reversal here and we go negative for the day, I, I don't see 
opportunities popping up until Monday. So I'm letting those expire. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm keeping an eye on Blackstone here. I uh, might get the, uh, let's just go back here and uh, can quickly see what's happening. Oh, I need to log in. Well, uh, let me log in off screen. <laughs> so that, that 120, 126 by 142 right now, high of the day 139. All right. You so. definitely had the right idea to wait. That 150, it's close. It's close, but. Okay. So right now I could easily get $1.35. Uh, so let's see. Do I want to settle for $1.35? So $1.35 would give me $1,350. And uh, that's 55%. Look at a huh? Look at a buck 40. Is that what I can get right now? You'd have to see, but. $1,400? Now there's come on. There's already 142. There's 142. There will be 150. There will be 150 in the next few minutes. Otherwise, I, I'm willing to drop it down to a dollar 40. If we don't see it here in the next few minutes, uh, absolutely. But but you see, uh, just to to give you an idea, usually I'm not trading that long. I mean, I'm doing it right now because we're doing it. Uh, <clears throat> we're doing it right now. Um, but I, I'm usually done after like 20 minutes, 30 minutes max. Uh, but uh, this, is, this is, by the way, if you're if you're rooting for me here to get the dollar fifty, do me a favor, click on like, click on like if you're rooting for me. I want to know, do you do you like this? Uh, is this helpful? What we did here today? Are you rooting for the dollar fifty? Because I do believe the more likes this video gets, the more likely I can get my dollar fifty here. <laughs> so do that. Uh, but again, I'm willing to drop it down. I just want to see what is Blackstone doing here right now. But uh, yeah, if you're enjoying this video and uh, you this was helpful to you at all, then uh, do this. Okay. So if you, if you like this, uh, this live trading and uh, you want us to do this more often, I said, just uh, click on like, because this is where we see if we get a, a lot of likes on this video, we, we might do this again, probably not next week because we are traveling, but we could plan it over the next few weeks. And if you like uh, the, the tool that we are using here and you were considering it, take a look at uh, PowerXOptimizer.com. I left, uh, left a link in the description here as well, or rockwelltrading.com slash special until Sunday. Uh, we have the special promotion here where you get uh, the PowerX Optimizer and Theta Kings, our class that we did, uh, where I was able uh, back in, two years ago, almost two years ago, uh, to yeah turn a, a small account of $25,000. And you can even do it on a smaller account. You could do it on ten or $15,000 account. Uh, I know that some of our mastermind members said, okay, let's just do this and uh, let's try to double this account in, in a few weeks. And uh, it, it is possible. I'm not saying that uh, you will tr uh, do this when you're trading Theta Kings, but this is the strategy that I used to do that. Okay. Anyhow, hope that this was helpful. Mark, what are, what are your thoughts? I, I'm just liking uh, the traders want to be long going into the weekend. Yeah. Should be a nice pop then on Monday if that is the case. So let's see. We will keep you updated. So no stock market update next week because next week we are both traveling. So, uh, but hey, we'll be back. We'll let you know. Have a great weekend. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave us a like and uh, check out the PowerX Optimizer if you want. Up to you. Okay. Have a great weekend. Happy trading, everybody.